This is Viewpoint, a timely discussion of the issues and concerns of the people and places along the Central Coast with Maya Carroll. Welcome to Viewpoint. In our next half hour, we'll be talking to long-timers, long-time artists who make the Central Coast their home. You see their works everywhere in buildings, in galleries, in Central Coast parks. Young artists or art lovers can learn a lot from these artists, such as some questions are never answered. You say, what is art? Here's a question. You know, imagine such a thing. Look it up in the dictionary. <laughs> it's art who? <laughs> It's as difficult to answer as if you ask me, what is love or what is God? A documentary about the works and lives of longtime Central Coast artists will air later this month on public television station KTEH. It chronicles the works and lives of some 20 artists and looks back at the first artist who started the colony of artists on the Central Coast uh, that it's now famous for. We'd like you to meet some of the people involved in this uh, documentary, Long Timers. Uh, to my left, Eve Tartar. She's a sculptress, and you'll see a lot of her uh, in the documentary. Uh, producer uh, Marie Wainscote and director Paul Bochkowski. I good. made it on that, on your name. <laughs> I was very worried. Uh, thank you all for being here to talk about this documentary, which is fascinating. I did have a chance to see it, and I was uh, fascinated. I watched the whole hour. First, either Marie or Paul talk about what got you interested in, in doing this type of documentary? Well, I think Paul could probably start off because okay. it was inspired through an, an uh, Several years ago, I had a job driving taxi cab in Carmel for Joe's Taxi. People and in film will take just about any job, <laughs> yeah, that's right? That's true. <laughs> and and uh, the dispatcher at the time was a fellow by the name of Sam Colburn was an artist and I didn't know he was an artist to me he was just a, a crusty old dispatcher and uh, after working with him for several months he told me that he was going to have a one-man show at the Carmel Art Association and I went to see that show and was just it completely changed the way I looked at Sam it was a, a show of paintings of surfers and they look so young and vibrant, the, the paintings. I, I couldn't believe that this older fellow could have done a pain, paintings that look that young. And Sam used to tell these wonderful stories about the old days in Carmel, and I thought somebody should be saving these stories for future mm -hmm. generations. And then and Long Timers was born of, of that experience. Well, that was before I even became involved in filmmaking, mm -hmm. but it, it planted the seed in my mind that I'd, I always wanted to do something with Sam. So you had, you had the idea going, and then you had the opportunity to do it. Were you amazed to find out how many senior artists there were with stories like Sam's that were almost unknown by the people who, who live in the area? Yes, I was. Oh, yeah, we were both just really uh, taken by the numbers. And that was the most difficult part of the production, was choosing who was going to be in the film. Eve, they chose you as one of their artists. Do you find that you're... Uh, almost unknown despite the fact you have so many works of art? Well, I'm actually, I'm much better known than I uh, uh, realize because my work is in some of the major hotels. I'm in the uh, lodge at Pebble Beach. They have 25 of my things there. I'm at the Spindrift Inn, uh, the Pacific Hotel, the uh, Beach Hotel. So my art is very widely distributed, as well as the fact that I show at the Carmel Art Association. But if you were to walk down the street, people might not know it's you behind all those beautiful well, works. Well, sometimes, sometimes I've been astonished when I've been in the supermarket and reached out for an apple and said, someone said, oh, you're Eve Tata. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, you're, you're people do recognize me, and I've been around for 30 years. And hopefully, a, a lot you're going to be I've around been a lot longer. The peninsula for 30 years, but actually, I was uh, born and uh, trained as an artist in New York City, and I grew up at a very, very fortunate time because the 50s and 60s in New York were this was epoch making. And, uh, this was a very bohemian time, wasn't it, where yes, artists felt free, they could do what they want, expression was in? Uh, yes, but, you know, artists struggled terribly because at that time in the 50s, um, there were really only three ways for an artist to go. He either painted like Picasso, or he painted like Mondrian, or he was surrealist. And everybody thought there's no place else to go that artists have pushed the frontier to the most extreme section. Then came Jackson Pollock 
and Rothko and Motherwell and, and de Kooning and by gosh, the center of the art world changed from 500 years of being in France mm. to the New York scene. And it was one of the great cultural revolutions that uh, it's, it's now immortal. Now, what brought you to the Central Coast, to Carmel? Well, I was told when I came to Carmel to visit that everybody in the world wants to live in Carmel, but few could. And fortunately, they made room for me. <laughs> and uh, I was married to a poet and an artist, and we had all the stimulation we wanted out of New York. And we were looking for a place to be quiet and to produce. And Carmel was the perfect environment for us. I, I've heard stories of the art colony days uh, in Carmel. Is, are those stories true where there was just an artist on every corner? Oh, absolutely. It was, it was a home for the artist. And you know, Carmel is only one square mile in uh, size and has a hundred art galleries. So you know it's very welcoming to the artist. Is it too commercialized? What are your thoughts on that? It always has been. But you can't confuse the commercial aspect with the creative impulse of the artist. It's just like you can't accuse uh, uh, the theater of being commercial when there are great actors there. You know, they're got to separate the two worlds. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, the world always thought that artists liked starving and living <laughs> in cold <laughs> attics. And I remember my first teacher in New York was 1932. My first teacher produced an, uh, an ad from the New York Times and it said, loft for rent, six floors walk up, no heat, no water, no convenience is ideal for the artist. <laughs> <laughs> and these, Eve's story is, is one of those terrific stories that you have preserved on this documentary, Long Timers. Is there, does every artist have a story? Oh, yes. That, how, do you, how were you able to choose in a, a story, stories to put in just one hour? Well, it, it was difficult. And Paul was the editor as well as the director. And uh, we uh, worked we collaborate a lot, but it was Paul's final decision on what was going to end up in the film in part one. Just out of curiosity, how many hours of tape did you have going in to make one hour? We had uh, 40 hours of mm -hmm. tape to make part one. 40 hours of stories, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. comments. Mm -hmm. Have you, you have a little child at home. Yes. <laughs> uh, would you say that you'd want your child to be an artist or a poet when he grew up? Yeah, he could have a day job, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, no parent, no parent would choose mm -hmm. that as a career. Although I think there is some relaxation on that. And I don't know how you feel about that. I think there are some parents who now want a creative outlet for their families, their children, as long as they could support themselves in some other way. Do you think that there's a better mix now of maybe business and, and art, where it I artists think there's an expression? An easement. But you don't have to be all one or, or all the other. No. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, 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 to choose to be an artist is actually to choose to be mm -hmm. free, mm -hmm. to, to choose to live outside of the usual uh, format of what a life should be like. Uh, and it's a very important declaration of independence to be an artist. And that was one of the reasons why we went with the film, was that that's the first message that a lot of young people are getting in the schools, we felt, is that there's not a life in the arts. And we wanted to say there not only is a life in the arts, but to introduce them to artists who did choose their, who didn't abandon their art early on. And the only way that you can introduce them to people who have done it is by finding senior artists, people who are still working, hence the the value, the value of a, of a senior artist. I don't know if you, can, is there a way to express what the value of a senior artist is, someone who's been doing their craft for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years? Well, I think Eve would probably answer that. Well, I think, I really think the senior artist, the writer, the musician, the poet, is a very po important bridge between the past and the future. 
And uh, it's a unique responsibility. And the artist sees life in this very, very important transitional way. And so uh, the, la the language of the artist is one that is very indicative of where we're going to go, because the artist is always exploring the new, always finding a new way uh, to express life's experiences. Does and it, yes. Excuse me. Does it concern you when you find that art programs, music, other art programs, are being uh, now cut back in schools? Of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. But, you know, uh, it, it may cut back the audience mm -hmm. for the creative person, but it doesn't cut back the production, the creative production mm -hmm. of the artist, the writer, the, the composer, the mm -hmm. architect, because it's, it's just like water that will find its level. You can't stop it. You can't stop the creativity of a creative person. Uh, it does make a difference, however, in the audience that the creative person can find. And um, every child needs the development of the spirit, not only of the practical things of life, but of the soul experience of life. And you've got to go to the artist for that. Because the artist expresses the invisible, but the perceived, the experience, the, the feelings of life. You've got to go to the artist to find expression. Do you think that uh, stories like Eve's and so many of the other artists that you have in Long Timers will be well received in schools? Do you hope to have Long Timers, which will play on public television? Mm -hmm. to, that definitely is to one artist, but can you get Long Timers out to you know, the future artists in the schools, in the yes. libraries? T talk about the... Uh uh, I think right. one of the ways right. you can do it is mm -hmm. that the artist is always willing to be a teacher uh -huh. and doesn't have to be on a payroll to work with children. So we're all available all well, the time. Besides, uh, I mean, having been inspired initially through Sam Colburn uh, with uh, Paul's acquaintance, our, our need to do the film was to get it out there and be seen. So what we did is we offered the film free of charge to all the schools and libraries in Monterey County. Mm -hmm. It was not a money-making project. This was a project that we want the message out there. Mm -hmm. And yes, indeed, it will go out to future artists because we have been delighted delighted to hear that there's such a wide audience. Yes. Yeah. And thanks to a grant from uh, Friends of Sunset Foundation mm -hmm. in Carmel, mm -hmm. we are in the process of putting a copy of Long Timers in every school and library in Monterey County. And y there's not only a Long Timers 1, but there's a Long Timers 2 as well. Mm -hmm. right. More of the, the hours mm -hmm. of, of tape that you had from th that went into Well, additional up. hours. We've, we've, uh, done, we've more done more interviews. You've done more interviews. Yes. Okay. So by the time we've, we've finished, we will have amassed over 100 hours of taped interviews and have interviewed over 50 artists. Which eventually all the footage will then be... We'll, we'll go to interactive CD-ROM. Interactive CD -ROM. All, the, all the interviews, mm -hmm. all the uncut mm -hmm. interviews... What, yeah. a great, what a great thing for, for local history. Right. Yeah. Well, the one thing I'd like to mention, though, Please. at this time, Mia, is that this could have never been done without the assistance of the Barnett J. Siegel Charitable Trust. Yes. Okay. Um, thank but goodness that they believe in the arts. Yeah, that's the arts. We need yeah. to take a break right now. Okay. Uh, we're, we'll be right back, though. Uh, Eve, thank you for joining us in this first segment. More with Long Timers. We'll be right back. <laughs> 